Welcome back. We do have some big news from earlier this week. Sources tell NBC News that the Biden administration plans to reclassify marijuana from a Schedule 1 drug like heroin and LSD to a Schedule 3 drug like Tylenol with codeine and steroids. The rescheduling is the first time the federal government has acknowledged the potential medical benefits of cannabis. The move will take months to take effect once the government officially announces it, and it's still well short of federal legalization, which still has high levels of support. According to a recent Pew poll, roughly 9 in 10 Americans say that marijuana should be legal for medical or recreational use. 24 states, as well as the District of Columbia, have legalized small amounts of marijuana for recreational use. Joining me to talk more about this is Oregon Democratic Congressman Earl Blumenauer, who's, of course, a longtime leading voice for cannabis reform in Congress. Uh, Congressman, thank you so much for being here. This is something that you've been pushing for for decades. <laughs> What do you know about what the administration is planning and, and what do you think about this rescheduling move? Is it the smart decision at this particular time? I think it's very consequential. I, as you say, I've been working on this for 50 years. Uh, I have never been more pleased in terms of a single decision that the federal government has done. By moving to Schedule 3, it sends a signal that the lie that somehow cannabis doesn't have medicinal uh, properties is just simply that. It's not true. By changing to Schedule 3, it will take tens of thousands of cannabis businesses across the country and make them profitable overnight, because right now, most of them cannot fully deduct their business expenses. Now they can. It changes the economics fundamentally. It also is going to be a signal in areas like medical research. It'll help smooth that path. Um, I, I could not be more pleased, and I think, I hope, that the administration will own it and accelerate it, mm -hmm. because this is something that's good for America, and candidly, it's good politically for the administration. So talk more about that. Do you think that this is the first stage? Uh, is it your belief that they may even be considering outright legalization, something you've also been pushing? How soon could we see that? Well, I think this is going to unleash a set of actions that's going to build the momentum. There is legislation in the Senate, the Safe Banking Act, that is teed up, ready to go. If they allow that on the floor of the Senate, now this, mind you, has passed the House seven times, that takes care of an opportunity to be able to have state legal cannabis companies to have banking services. I mean, right now, there are people carrying duffel bags full of $20 bills to pay their taxes. That's insane, and it's dangerous. And I think this is another domino that can fall very quickly. When this momentum builds, I think we're going to see the public awareness. We're going to see the political impact. I mean, it's no secret. If it weren't for the cannabis issue, Senate Democrats would not be in charge. But John Fetterman embraced legalization throughout his career, and it's clear that that was a deciding effort in a close race for the, U for the U.S. Senate. Uh, cannabis pulled younger, progressive voters to the polls in Arizona and gave a 30,000-vote victory after it passed the marijuana initiative by a 60-40 margin. People understand the politics. Mm -hmm. No politician has ever been punished for embracing marijuana reform, and we're about to see this play out in spades. And, and this is something that we've seen, right, a degree of voter apathy with young voters in particular right now. There's obviously a number of things on the world stage that they're concerned about. Yeah. Is this a way to combat that and energize young voters to get to the polls this fall? Well, the failed war on drugs uh, <laughs> destroyed the lives of a million young African-American men. It has enabled people to have their criminal records uh, otherwise complicate their lives. Uh, this is something that is now supported by 70 percent of all voters, a majority of Republicans. And this is something that I think will energize not just young people, but people, people of all ages are using medical cannabis. Uh, it, it is going to unlock the economics. Uh, it's a $40 billion a year business now, and that's just state legal. Uh, mm -hmm. If it, we can squeeze out the black market, uh, it's almost a half million people work there. 
uh, it, it continues to build that momentum, and it's something that's broadly popular. So let's uh, change gears if we can now, Congressman, and I want to talk about the protests that we're seeing on college campuses around, around the country, including uh, right near you at Portland State University in Oregon. When you see these scenes from college campuses, what's your response uh, to what is going on, both from the administration's perspective and from the perspective of the people protesting? Well, I fully understand the frustration with uh, the war in Gaza, uh, what's going on there with the Netanyahu government, I think borders on uh, a war crime. They're just misguided and wrong. Uh, I understand that frustration. Uh, but people standing up, as we've seen, uh, to make sure that it doesn't trample on the rights, first of all, of the rest of the students to be able to get an education. And there are other people who have differing views. Mm -hmm. Being able to acknowledge that and work with it uh, is absolutely essential. And I'm, I'm hopeful that we can calm this down a little bit. I hope that we're going to see a ceasefire move forward in Gaza. And I'm hopeful that we're able to listen to the pain and anguish that is evidenced by so many, but not devolve into yeah. uh, violence and disruption. I've only got about a minute, sir, but you are retiring at the end of your term. You've seen a lot in Congress. You told uh, an Oregon publication at the end of last year, I'm not certain that two more years in Congress in this climate is the best way to deal with the things that I care about. What do you mean by that? Uh, if Congress well, were less toxic, would you still be running? Well, there's so much time and energy that's taken up on things that just simply don't matter. It shouldn't have been that hard to be able to get the aid to Ukraine. Um, I think as a civilian, I can work on things I care about, like cannabis reform and animal welfare and bicycles <laughs> and little communities without being caught up in the day-to-day -day politics. Uh, I, I love the institution. I'm really frustrated by what it's become. Okay, Congressman Earl Blumenauer, we know you buy that bicycle pin, uh, sir. Uh, we will miss you uh, when you leave the halls of Capitol Hill, but we appreciate you being with us today. I appreciate it so much. Thanks. Happy to do it. Thanks for watching. Stay updated about breaking news and top stories on the NBC News app or follow us on social media.